Hello guys, I'm Jose Luis Martinez, I'm CEO at Capsule for some strange reason and uh, yeah, I've done quite some certifications on AWS and I've got to, be, I've got to deliver lots of AWS training. So, uh, um, but really, really, really I'm not here to brag about that, I'm just, I come here as a builder. Because that's what I am. I'm happy being a builder. And yeah, I can define my life as basically building tools to keep our customers' applications happy. That means keeping them running, right? And I'm at a pro conference, of course. What language am I building in? So, uh, yeah, and I built in the cloud. Do you know, do, do you guys know what cloud computing is? Can I see some hands if anyone knows what cloud computing is? Okay, great. Um, didn't find the picture of a unicorn. No. <laughs> um, it's awesome, right? It's forgetting about your servers for forever. Well, not forgetting, it's just having them in another place without having to wrap them and care about cables and stuff like that. So, uh, is there only one cloud? No, but there is one popular one. As you see, I'm quite intimate with it. AWS, Amazon Web Services. Uh, when I go to see what I can build in the clouds, so go to AWS's web page, start looking around, mm, Android, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby. Mm. Well, maybe I can't build here. Uh, go to Azure, .NET, Node.js, Multimedia is a platform. Uh, no, no pro here either. Go to Google, Google's Compute Engine. Uh, they have support for seven languages, but only put six icons here. Guess which one is missing? Uh, but, okay, what? No pro! <laughs> that makes me sad. That can't be. So, and I, I imagine that other people are sad too, because no Rust, no Haskell. Uh, yeah, really, clouds give us an API to, to do things, and for the rest of mortals, there's rest. Uh, but uh, rest is, a, is really like a strange standard. Uh, and as with AWS, it's not always rest. So lots of their APIs are, are really some other thing. They're HTTP based, but not REST. And that, so I'm, I'm sad. That makes me sad. Uh, and of course, my work, I'm a builder. I have to use cloud at work. And the, the, if you can get these three things to combine, there's a sweet spot here in the middle. And it's your dreamland. Because uh, you can do whatever you want without the constraints of infrastructure. Uh, and of course, for all being pro, we have a big community and a lot of people that put modules to do stuff on CPAN. And uh, like being very involved with AWS. I would go to CBAN to look what modules were up there. And I'd have like a kind of love-hate relationship <laughs> with all the modules. And so that's where pause come in. That, that's where it was born. Because it was born for 2013. Um, it wasn't on CPAN the first day. It had to mature in, uh, in an encrypted USB. 
uh, which only my machine could. No, it was on GitHub, but no one seemed to find it. Um, and that was okay because uh, it wasn't stable enough. It wasn't finished. It wasn't done. Um, finally, I got um, the courage or, or, or got it to a point where I would say, okay, looks stable. Let's release it to the world. Um, because uh, because well, I wanted to accomplish it, some things with with pause. The things that were bothering me with the other modules on CPAN, not that they weren't good, it was that, for example, um, you had the module AWS Fly wrapper to support any and. To, to be able to call any AWS API, and uh, but that sells out to a Python, to the Python CLI, and that's slow, very slow. And I want native support for things. So um, right now, as of today, you go to the repo. There are 101 services, 101 APIs. Uh, only three are unsupported or partially unsupported. Uh, so that's like check. That's been a, accomplished. Uh, also another thing that bothered me is that all these modules were done by different authors and in different times and with different knowledges. Uh, and so they had their own preferences and their own defaults. Uh, for example, uh, AWS provides us with uh, what they call regions, and that's basically a cluster of data centers in some geographic region. There's like 11 or 12 or 13, they're, they're popping up all the time. Uh, and so an author, when he did a module, if he was from the US, he would put in a default for the US. And if the author was European and would favor European region, he would put in the default for the European region. And yeah, there's lots more. What happens with all the rest? We don't get loved. Yeah, every time a region pops up, so if I'm using any of these other regions, oh, Matt, not that it's not supported, I have to tell it to go to the, to not default to the region. So if I'm not careful enough, I end up calling other places. So uh, for me, the thing was try not to be opinionated about this, try not to have defaults, or, less, or at least let the user specify their defaults. So that, Another check that was done for, for pause that was easily implemented. Another thing, yeah, uh, Perl is really very Tim Uh So there are lots of ways to make an HTTP request in Perl. Uh, so you have LWP, you have HTTP Tiny. You guys know more. Perl, Perl, they all even rhyme. Um, any more? And I'm sure I can go on, just pick these off a of random CPAN search. Uh, and every one of these modules that were on CPAN would use one or other HTTP library, the one that their author preferred, because it was maybe part of their native stack. Uh, and I said, why why should a module impose the HTTP client on the um, on the user on the programmer? Uh, so I wanted to make that pluggable, even for asynchronous stuff. So if you see there's a module user agent. Pause lets you plug in callers. Uh, for example, the the LWP one was contributed because I got a, a GitHub issue saying, hey, I'm, I, 
Um, let's see, POS uh, defaults to HTTP tiny because it's a Pro Core module and great, it's fast. Uh, but uh, this guy wanted to use LWP because he was uh, he was behind an HTTPS proxy, and, though, and HTTP tiny doesn't do that. Uh, so I helped him build the color. It was like 20 lines of, uh, of code. And we even distributed, uh, so, so he got to call uh, AWS via LWP with some lines. I think that, that was OK, great. And I did the module stuff just as an experiment to, to see if we could support asynchronous calling. Because all of these callers tend to be synchronous, and, and to see how how pause would adapt to having asynchronous uh, stuff in it, and I know that people are even using it. So uh, great, another tech. Uh, another thing that I wanted was, of course, uh, support for all regions. Because some modules would have some subtle bugs in the in uh, when they form the DNS name to call the service, there are some regions with special rules, and the, the AWS SDKs figure that out for you. Um, those modules didn't, uh, so basically we would go rob from AWS or their region definitions and endpoints and use them. So uh, check. And another important thing, and this was bugging me the most, is the, the uh, in, in AWS, you can authenticate to the APIs in different manners. So basically, uh, you, you can, if you're running your code inside an AWS instance, inside the machine, and you have assigned it what's called an instance role, you can call AWS with, without authenticating. It, it, it looks like black magic. It's really not. It, the only thing that the SDKs do for you is go to a special place to find some temporary credentials and use them. But the thing is that you don't have to care about those credentials. So you're basically calling APIs without handling credentials. And that's awesome, because there's always a problem. Where do I put my credentials? Don't hard code them in the environment. Now I need a configuration manager. Do I need to encrypt them? No. And uh, if you're running inside AWS, They are taking care of that for you. And uh, lots of the modules that were on CPAN didn't do it, didn't know about instance roles, for example. So uh, also, you can do things like uh, assume a role. So you can call APIs from another account. Um, and I wanted pause to be able to do that too, because and basically, since we're building the tools to do stuff in other accounts, and we needed that. And they also support federation. So guess what? The credential handling is pluggable too. And that's been great because the other, like a month ago, Gadget Junkie came along and said, hey, you know that uh, the Elastic Container Service? I've built a credential provider for pause to get the credentials. They're like instance roles, but for when you're running inside a container. So they said, same thing. Uh, they just plug it into pause and contribute it uh, back. And it's on CPAN even. And even one of my coworkers uh, has also uh, contributed back another credential plugin. You'll have to remember about that like soon because I, I, I made this change because I wanted to change something else and then I forgot to change that something else. So I'm going to change it live, but I, I still had my problem. <laughs> Sorry. 
so so basically it's uh, it's um, uh, you can get your the credentials from wherever you want you know it, basically AWS APIs need two things an access key and a secret key they're like your user and password for the APIs uh, and there's lots of ways to get them so if you have your credentials sitting in a file over there or in a database or you can write a credential provider to get them and then call the AWS um, APIs with them so great that's check so you would say is pause done got all the check marks and no I'd say no. <laughs> I have a sense of accomplishment, like, <laughs> it's been awesome, uh, uh, doing, uh, building pause was not easy, because uh, as you can imagine, uh, 101 services with all the methods and the parameters and writing all that code was not easy. Yeah, but of course, I'm very lazy and I didn't do it. Uh, I just made programs that robbed from the other AWS SDKs and generated some code. So, uh, and uh, the thing is that that's been awesome, but I think the main goal is more or less there. So, the main goal was like, let us consume from pro all AWS services. And that's almost done. There's only three that are partially supported and break from time to time and don't have uh, as many tests as I would want. Uh, so, but there is a lot of refactoring to do because I, when I started, I had no idea of the complexity of, uh, of the APIs. There are like four or five types of APIs and calling styles. Sometimes you have to send JSON. Sometimes you send parameters. Sometimes it's REST. Sometimes it's not. Some, sometimes they return you XML. Sometimes they return JSON. So uh, yeah, the most strange ones, uh, those three that are not fully supported are S3, that's quite popular, but I'm, I'm, I'm not that nervous because there are very good modules already on CPAN to do things with S3. Uh, but we'll get that fixed once some of this refactoring is done. Um, Route 53 and Glacier. So once we fix that, it, we're almost there. And I'm looking at the project and I'm saying, hmm. Pause looks healthy. So we're getting well, we released 34 versions to CPAN. Uh, some people hate me because every version is like one uh, tar with uh, one megabyte and uncompressed it's like 10 megabytes. So when you install Pause, you install all the libraries to access all 100 services. Uh, even if you want just one. So that's one of those things that have to be done. <laughs> that's splitting it in, in lots of services. But of course, maybe I will get yelled at because every time I release, I put 101 modules to CPAN. So uh, I'm very happy because Capsule, in Capsule we're using Pause since 2014 more or less. Um, and it has some community too. So uh, the, the community is actively using Paws and it's actively reporting, reporting bugs. Uh, it, the, and lots of them have to do with S3 and that's being addressed. <laughs> so, uh, S3, when you use it, it will say that it's currently unsupported, unstable, blah, blah, blah. 
And the people have the kindness to even seeing this message, just drop a, a line saying, hey, I've seen that S3 should be doing this, so I've tried this method and it's not working. Uh, and sometimes they even propose solutions. I've been through the code, I've fixed this or that. It may be an ugly hack, but just have it and yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. So, um, uh, so it's been 36 contributors and in individual contributors uh, with lots of contributions. Uh, some more than others. Sometimes it's just a, just a line of code, pull request gets in. Uh, sometimes it's like a, a credential provider. So that's great. We even got mentioned in the AWS blog. So uh, a guy at AWS that uses Perl picked up the, the, the SDK and said, oh, that's great. Can I write a blog post? And he read it like, like a year ago. Uh, so it got even mentioned. So it seems like some traffic is coming in there. And some uh, people know that it's not the official SDK, but works. And recently, and I'm very, very glad with this, uh, POSX was born. So uh, people are trying to build a bit more functionality. A, a pause is just for calling the API. So the first module that was born on pause X is pause X DynamoDB document client. And what does this do? So if you've ever used DynamoDB, it's like a key value store. And the thing is, uh, the values are very structured. So if you're going to put in what's a uh, um, structured hash that has a key and a string value, you have to tell DynamoDB that that's a string value. So you're basically sending it that this key has this value that's a string, and it, you have to pass in some pretty wild data structures. So this thing does that for you. It takes the JSON, you pass it a document, and it converts it to the thing the DynamoDB needs, and it uses pause underneath to do it. Uh, and even recently, it looks like I've fooled more people into using pause. It's just hammering all the time. Maybe it's just releasing stuff and seeming serious. So, uh, one day I receive a mail from the guys at Sibricura, a recruiter, uh, saying, Hey, we're using pause quite a bit. Uh, would you mind us sending patches? I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, they've committed to help out, and that's great. And I'm thinking myself, so what's next? Since it's almost done. So almost done in the sense that it will never be done completely. But yeah, what else can we do? Is this the, more, the most important thing we can do? It's, maybe not. Uh, I tend to notice that cloud computing is the new default for people. Who here runs cloud infrastructure or infrastructure in the cloud? Those are quite a lot of hands. Who here has built a data center in the last five years? Less hands. Uh, who here wants to repeat that experience? <laughs> uh, so, so, the, so the thing is that uh, it looks like computing is shifting on to these cloud platforms. And uh, yeah, pause being just the tool to build tools. It, I kind of see pause like a foundation. And of course, on foundations, what do you build? Buildings build something more. So um, yeah, one 
when we really built POS in 2013, it was like I will, it was just for one service to, to, to get one service working. I mean, it's one of my favorite services in AWS. It's called CloudFormation. And it basically lets you describe all your infrastructure in a JSON format, and then you give it the JSON, and it starts provisioning load balancers, machines, firewalls, blah, 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 and it goes on doing that for you and it also supports updates and that's one of my favorite services. And it's one of the services that our company uses intensively and that we didn't have access to in Pro. So we had some a toolkit to generate that JSON because writing JSON is that, that type of JSON. Ha, has anyone written CloudFormation here? I have. Does anyone want to continue doing it? No. <laughs> um, so, so we had the tooling, but we can't. But we couldn't call the API. And that was like the first module for pause. It was the first service that was supported. Uh, but that was to build a tool that was also 2013-ish of Cloud Deploy. And we've finally gotten to open sourcing that. So uh, some months, some month ago or something like that, we made a stealth release on CPAM. We didn't talk very much about it. Uh, the tool is called Cloud Deploy. If you look up Cloud Deploy on CPAM or do a CPAM install of Cloud Deploy, you'll get a toolkit to build cloud formation. And uh, yeah, I can't talk about it very much because uh, if not, uh, well, it would be too much time. And another thing is that one of my colleagues will be talking about this in two sessions from now, I think. Uh, so, so that's great. And we're, that's a higher level tool for you guys. Also, uh, AWS has a service called SQS. It's the simple queue service. Basically, you put messages. Has anyone used RabbitMQ? Yay, lots of people. Has anyone used SQS? I have. Uh, the thing is that um, basically SQS worker is it's like a very, very, very light framework for you to write the code that you want to process messages that are on SQS and it will pull the queue for you. And you just have to write the code that you want to process the, the messages. So uh, it's basically abstracting out the SQS bit for you, handling errors and stuff like that. And that's on CPAN too. Uh, yeah, those are tools because we built another tool that's called Chrome. Cloud cron, okay, to solve another problem. That's when you're. How many here have a cron that's like 100 lines long? <laughs> or seen it? Yeah, that, that, that's some hands. There are stories of even bigger crons, no? Uh, and yeah, when you're in the cloud, it's like hard to get. Uh, so starting to scale, it's it's like to get um, a cron on more than one machine. So we built something that's built on SQS Worker and built on Cloud Deploy. It deploys its infrastructure with Cloud Deploy to uh, help you guys out uh, building distributed crons. And what else? OK, uh, uh, when you're building these infrastructures, or when you're doing, when you're automating the creation of your infrastructure, lots of times getting your configurations to your application, because each time you'll have a new database, you know, the, you recreate whole infrastructures, your, old, your, your new API endpoint, how do I get these configurations to my application? Some of you guys will know uh, HashiCorp console. Uh, 
And this is just a thing that will cost less because it's, it's, I think it's almost free. Uh, if you're running on AWS and will try to get the configurations from a service called the SSM service uh, in AWS uh, from an API that it's very obscure that no one knows about, but is very practical for this. So, um, so just take a look at it because it really makes uh, passing configurations to your application uh, very much easy. Trick, it does so with environment variables. So basically, you, you, you're not tied to this utility or to that specific API. So if you change this for console or for whatever, you're OK. It won't get in your way. So my intention is that you can build these types of things and have Perl here, 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 here without any problems. Um, so you can be the new, so, so, so you can use the latest technology available to you. And of course, I'm thinking, uh, I've just been talking to you about, about AWS, right? And uh, thanks to Ovid, I can put up here a Gartner, uh, a Gartner diagram, it's the magic quadrant. Basically, it says who is the who are the biggest players in Cloudland. And you can see AWS. I already told you it's very, very, very uh, big in market size and innovation, blah, 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 and Microsoft. So I think the next foundation that we have to build comes in color Azure. Yeah, it's a color. It's this color. Or, or in my screen, it's better. <laughs> um, so um, we basically got Foz tried to repeat some the some of the same things and put up an SDK for it too. It's not on CPAN yet because we're maturing it. We're we're. Learning painstakingly, painstakingly to uh, to call the the Azure APIs, it works, uh, but it it can be a little rough around the edges. So uh, you're welcome to to use it and to report bugs. Just don't think of it as a pro production ready. Or don't think, if you use it in production, it's probably your choice. It comes with no, no guarantees. Just don't think that we won't break it in the next version. So, um, yeah, to do that, of course, I like this quote from Bill Gates. We've done the same lazy thing one more time. So it's basically built with the same philosophy as pause. That's auto-generating code. Uh, and, but uh, to auto-generate code from AWS, we had to take on some, so they have some JSON files that define that this API, you have to call this URL with these parameters and put a JSON with this in the body and this parameter is called blah, 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 and it's a string. And so it's basically a definition. And maybe some of you know about something called Swagger. Uh, the AWS definitions are not Swagger, because AWS, really AWS APIs are the vast majority are not even REST. And Swagger is to define REST uh, APIs. So, uh, okay, we had to build a small Swagger parser uh, that to build, to be able to get the Azure SDK files because they've put up in GitHub their definitions for the APIs in Swagger format. Thanks for supporting a standard because I had to reverse engineer the AWS ones and and they even changed them. So I had to reverse engineer them two times. 
And uh, here, at least Microsoft has just adopted the standard. Uh, so this is on CPAN. If you have to do swagger, if you have to parse the swagger and like do things with it, uh, you can you can take a look at this. It gives you an object model of uh, of the swagger schema you're looking at. And to do that, you know, swagger is JSON, and I kind of hate playing around with JSON uh, because uh, Swagger really, the, the JSON part is not important. It's a data structure and it represents like objects in the JSON. So uh, here you have a small talk about why I hate JSON and what MUSEX data model is. And it's basically a toolkit that you can tell it what your JSON looks like and then throw it at JSON, and it will give you an object model for that uh, for that JSON. So you can access the, instead of reading the JSON and having a Perl data structure and having to iterate over keys and values and blah, 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 you get Moose objects from it. So, um, so yeah, the, the thing was it was fairly easy, just, same calling style, returning objects, do a global substitution of pause for Azure, and hey, it works. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware that there is like lots of copied code, and we're getting on to some type of pattern here. Uh, so I think that some things in pause and the Azure SDK can be commonized and make a toolkit to call web services. Uh, there are some out there. The thing is that the, the thing that I think makes pause and special is that it doesn't try to return data structures, it tries to return objects. And it tries to validate the parameters that you pass it. Um, so, so those parameters don't get passed uh, verbatim to the APIs. It tries to give you. It, it tries to. It tries to give you a friendlier user interface for programming. So I, I think that this pattern can be extracted and can be used for other stuff. So yeah, uh, I think that that either one of these needs more foundations. The foundations be a bit bigger, and I want to work on testing. So testing, uh, testing your applications that use external APIs from an external provider is kind of hard. Uh, they can fail. They're, they're more like integration tests, but with even unreliable services, because normally when you have a database, you can just count it's there. But uh, AWS APIs will say from time to time, don't want to talk to you because I'm having some type of error or capacity problem or blah, blah, blah. Uh, So testing your applications that your that the tools you've built are robust enough is one thing I, uh, I want to get around to. Uh, so basically, your code doesn't go up in flames when you uh, someday. Um, yeah, so it's work around help testing your app because pause has to be tested and Azure, the SDK has to be tested. Uh, but uh, there, are all, there, are all, uh, there are already some tools in there. So with pause color, mock color, if you enable this as one of the pluggable colors of pause, it will record all the HTTP requests and results in record mode. And it stores them on the file system. And then when you put it in replay mode, if you call in the same sequence, like in a test file, it will return the thing that it returned the first time. So you don't have to be calling in your integration tests, for example, the services. That can be quite handy. Of course, uh, already uh, we've used this. So if you do non-deterministic stuff, uh, it, it won't work because it has the precaution to, if you don't call things with the same parameters 
in the same order, it will say, okay, I, I can't mock this. I don't know what the API would do. Of course, there is something in there for you if you have to do that, we step pause. I, I, I decided to embrace the pause X concept and, and say, okay, I, I'll build a call where you can put the implementation in. So basically, this lets you write your own module to mock an AWS service without any network in between. So it lets you intercept the call. If you called SQS create queue, it calls a method in one of your classes and you get to define the behavior that you want. So you can mock an ent entire queue service if you want and you can make it fail one out of 10 requests or process messages out of order or whatever you want. So uh, that's one thing that they, and it's already on CPAN too. Want to, uh, I do want to uh, work more on that. I think I'm overshooting time, right? Uh, so basically uh, cloud is not all, only about calling APIs. I see some needs. The thing is that there are lots of services where it's not just calling the API, it's consuming the service that's on the cloud. So I've had um, people email me saying, oh, you seem to know a bit about Perl and AWS. Can I run Perl on Lambda? And I'll just write them a mail saying, okay, try to do this, that, blah, blah, blah. Is it my SQL service, blah, 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 babe? Uh, I'll, I'll try to... Uh, I'll try to help them out. And the last thing I want to do, so that there is a repo up there trying to help you. It's just in the issues. I want to clean up the contents. And um, yeah, and try to help out more people. Try to document how to use Pro to use these services. So if you want to connect to EMR or to Redshift or blah, 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 have a small documents that help you say, okay, this module, on CPAN will let you talk to this service correctly. So there's a road to, there's a path. Uh, yeah, and I really want your help. So just send me some Twitter message saying, I'm crazy enough to want to call Pro. With Pro, I want to use this service and I'll try to help you out and we'll try to document it. So thank you.